the selection of a new pope about to begin, we look back at some of the more colorful figures in church history. As Jim Bitterman reports, papal infallibility doesn't mean they could do no wrong. Before he went off to retirement, Pope Benedict XVI reminded his brothers in the clergy that the church should be in the world, but not of the world. Yet, it's not just present-day scandals that have demonstrated how worldly churchmen can be. The Vatican has seen plenty of wickedness over the centuries. Take Leo X, for example. He's quoted as saying, since God has given us the papacy, let's enjoy it. Something he did by spending lavishly. A habit he's supported by selling off the Vatican's furniture and jewels and even statues of the apostles. And later he sold indulgences so that sinners could buy their way out of hell. Speaking of which, the Florentine poet Dante reserved a special place in hell for at least three other popes. Guilty, he said, of the crime of simony, putting sacraments and holy offices up for sale. And then there was Alexander VI, something of a libertine. He had a number of mistresses and a number of children. At one point, he tried to turn over papal properties to them. It was corruption so blatant, some in the church could no longer stand it. Obviously, we had a, a, a number of popes around the time, just before the Reformation, who had these uh, lax lives, which you might say was a cause, gave ground for the, uh, the Reformation, which sadly split the church in two. Perhaps worried about the negative vibes he was getting from the faithful, Alexander reinforced the passageway, a kind of escape route from the Vatican to the Castle San Angelo on the Tiber River, and improved the defenses on the castle just in case a pope would have to flee the Vatican for his life, which one eventually did. Certainly there's no question popes had enemies. Sergius III got rid of one of his, a pretender to the papal throne, by having him strangled to death in prison. But perhaps the prize for the most malevolent pope over the centuries should go to the 9th century pope Stephen VI who had his predecessor's body exhumed from the grave and dressed in papal robes in order to put the corpse on trial, a trial which the corpse lost. The sentence that the dead pope's three blessing fingers be cut off. Over the centuries, the Catholic Church has always been about saints and sinners, and past or present, there's been no shortage of either. Jim Bitterman, CNN, the Vatican. You are watching.